Hello again. Hello. Um, welcome or welcome back, whoever you may be. If you are not new, you probably found my channel because I was a like Walt Disney World person. I worked at Disney, I was in entertainment, I was a character attendant, I worked at Magic Kingdom, I also worked at Typhoon and attractions, I've done a whole bunch of stuff, so you've probably seen my channel because I worked at Disney. <laughs> um, but what a lot of people don't know, and I said this in like a video not too long ago, before I was a Disney World person, I was like super, super, super a Disneyland person. So I actually didn't go to Disney World at all until my 2018 program at Typhoon. I'd never been, that was the first time that I ever went. Um, and before that I was a pass holder at Disneyland for like years, like three years, I think. So I had done a bunch of Disneyland trips. I used to go to Disneyland for my birthday every year. I think it was my 21st, 22nd, 23rd. That sounds right that I went for. Um, and then I went to Disneyland last January with my roommate for my 2018 program, Steph. So I love Disneyland. I haven't been in almost exactly a month from when I'm filming this. It's like a week off, but I haven't been in like a year and I'm very sad about it. And this year, Walt Disney World is kind of taking a little bit of a backseat. So I'm sorry if that's what you came here for. I still have lots of like DCP content and stuff like that. More videos coming out about Disney World and my experience and working there and stuff like that. But vlog wise, we're gonna be shifting a little more Disneyland this year, which I am very, very, very excited about because I miss Disneyland with my whole entire like entity that park means so much to me <laughs> but because of that I thought it would be fun to do a little series about like planning my Disneyland trip which is kind of weird to me because I've never done like informative videos in this sense I've done like DCP videos and tips and tricks and stuff like that but I don't really talk about the parks themselves I either vlog or I'm talking about the Disney college program I don't really do anything in between but I thought it would be fun to kind of like go through my tips and tricks for like traveling, getting cheap flights, best hotels, because Disneyland is a totally different beast than Disney World. Even just looking at like hotels in the area and fast pass and things like that, like it's totally different. Um, I think they both have like their pros and cons, obviously. I do have to say I lean more Disneyland for which park I like better visiting as a tourist, I think. Um, but I wanted to just like kind of walk you through the process. So first off, um, like I said, this is going to be a little series. I think I'm going to do it every single Friday um, up until I like run out of things to talk about. So if you have any questions or things like that about like attractions, tickets, food, things in the area, resorts, I don't know. If you have questions, anything about Disneyland or you're planning a trip and like things that you think will come up, you can leave them in the comments because I am going to be splitting this into parts. So by the time that I get to like attractions and food for the parks, it's going to be like two or three weeks from now. So I can still add it in. This week I'm going to be talking about choosing dates of stay, so like times of year to go, and then I'm also going to be talking about hotel and flight, I think. Um, I want to stick them together because they make sense to do together, but I also don't want this to be like a bajillion year long video. So I'm going to try and film it all and then we'll see how I actually break it up. So first let's talk about the best time of year to go. I am a little biased. I really like going around Halloween time. The only time that I haven't been like holiday time year wise is Christmas. So I'm sorry I can't talk about Christmas. I do really want to go to the parks at Christmas but I honestly think if I'm going to do Christmas I'm going to do Walt Disney World. So I think the castle is really cute at Christmas. I think all the characters are really cute at Christmas at Disneyland but I've just never been because it is very very expensive and usually the annual pass that I had when I had one was blocked out. So Halloween is my favorite time, also it's my birthday, so I'm a little biased, but I do love the Halloween fireworks, um, I love the Halloween parties. It's changed recently because now it is in DCA, not Disneyland, so I haven't been to Mickey's Halloween party since it's moved over to like the Oogie Boogie Bash or whatever it is, but the decor is so cute, the costumes are so cute, I love the feeling of it, the weather is perfect in the fall, it's like cold enough that you can like throw something like this on at night, but it's also like not too cold where you're actually like cold or it's like snowing like it does in like Tokyo. <laughs> I think the number one draw for me is definitely the decor. Cars Land DCA at Halloween time is sick. It's perfect. It's pristine. I could ask for literally nothing more from park decor. So I think like September and November is a really good time to go. I've also gone in January. I've personally liked going in January, but I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. It can be a little bit chilly. It can rain a lot of the time. I got lucky last year when I went and we had like no rain, but the year before that we had like torrential downpour. So, but if you want like 
things that are cheap. You can try and get the tail end of Christmas sometimes. If you go like right around this week that I'm uploading this for um, January, you can kind of like sneak that in there without paying the holiday costs. But that being said, if you go late January, early February, you'll start to hit refurb season where they start to refurbish all the rides until the summer. So this year, for example, Haunted Mansion Holiday, instead of going back to Haunted Mansion and doing like a week flip over, they're doing a refurb way into the spring. So downside of going in the springtime is you're going to hit refurb season, so you're going to miss a lot of things. Summertime is obviously the summer. It is going to be higher crowds. It is going to be really, really hot. There was literally days last summer at Disneyland where the park like melted <laughs> essentially like it shut down because it was so hot um california can get into like the hundreds it's a very dry heat so it's like a different type of feeling than florida but it still gets really really hot so if you're not someone who does the heat you probably want to avoid that um like i said higher crowds lots of kids if you're doing a one day ticket it is more expensive um so those are things to keep in mind i personally avoid the summer entirely i would rather do like january february even March minus spring break. I've done, actually I'd rather do January, February, April, early May, September, October. Like those are my ideal months. Keep in mind if you fall over any holiday, there's probably something cute happening. So I went over April two years ago. We went for Easter, they had a little Easter egg hunt. So that was really cute. I went over Valentine's Day kind of last year. They had like flipped the Valentine's Day core in Disneyland. I almost said Magic Kingdom, that was, nope. <laughs> They flipped over to that and that was really cute, um, like late January, early February. So anytime that you go St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day, Easter, there's going to be something going on. So while it might be a little bit more like crowded over those holidays, you can always find cute things to do over the holidays too. Oh, I've already talked for eight minutes. Oh boy. Really quickly, I'm going to talk about flight and hotel. I'm going to try and keep this short and sweet. Y'all know all the basic tips and people always talk about flying and Tuesdays and booking on Wednesday and all of those things. This is going to be more Disneyland specific. The way that I tend to do it is if I'm booking, I'll look at multiple sources. So like for Disney World, when I was looking at going um, this month actually before I canceled my trip, I looked at Expedia because I used to always book Expedia, but it was actually cheaper on Google Flights. So I was just flying and not doing a hotel. So those are kind of the two big ones. Direct from airline is usually going to be the same as Google Flights than Expedia, but sometimes even though it's a discount site like Expedia, it's not always actually cheaper. Flights, I personally like flying into LAX if you're flying Disneyland. I know this isn't necessarily a popular opinion because it is a bigger airport and a busier airport and it is farther away, um, but you can take a look at the cost. So your other option is to fly into John Wayne, which is SNA. It is a lot closer. I think it's about half an hour away from the parks. Also a lot smaller of an airport. So if you're flying out of somewhere small like me, I fly out of a city called Kelowna, which is like in between <laughs> Vancouver and like Calgary, I guess. I'm like in the middle of my province um, and I do fly international. If you didn't know that, I'm Canadian. Um, if I'm trying to fly into John Wayne, it's a lot harder to get flights and they're way, way more expensive. Like, let me see just like an idea. When I'm looking at flight costs, if I'm deciding between the two airports, I will always add a super shuttle cost into my flight to give me an idea. Super Shuttle I found is the cheapest way to do it. They're super reliable on the West Coast. I had a terrible experience with Super Shuttle on the East Coast at MCO, so I would not recommend it for Disney World. But Disneyland, it's pretty cheap. It's usually like 30-ish dollars US round trip if you do a shared van, and you can usually find a promo code online for it too. It's not always the fastest way to get to the parks, but I'd rather spend $30 round trip on a Super Shuttle and take a little bit longer than $60 each way for an Uber and get there directly. So up to you, up to your budget. I'm here trying to save money because I'm a broke college student. Clone to LAX, end of April, I can do round trip on Alaska airline, I think, for $361. And there's a billion options on those days. Like these are all for the exact same days. A bunch of different time options. They have noon, 5.20, 5.30, 11 a.m., 6 p.m., 8 p.m. There's a whole bunch of times that you can book where if I'm looking at John Wayne, the flight is between $400 and $450, there's only one of them that's on the cheap side, and your options are a lot more limited. If you want to go up to where you would have the same amount of options as LAX for like times, you're gonna have multiple layovers, they're gonna be longer layovers, um, and your prices are gonna go up to $500. Like, there's only one page of flights here, and this bottom one is $500. So 
that's why I prefer LAX. If I can find a flight where like the time works out and I can fly into SNA and it is gonna be cheaper to do that and there's not like crazy layovers and things like that, I'll do it like this WestJet flight actually might be worth it. It's a 7 a.m. WestJet flight. It flies direct to Orange County. It's a six hour flight, it's $400. That may be a better deal than me paying $360 and flying to LAX and then shuttling down, but maybe it's not. Um, so take a look at Google Flights, take a look at, at Expedia, go in between those two airports. You're not going to have an option most of the time, like Magical Express that you get in Florida because, spoiler alert, I recommend not staying on property at all unless you're like <laughs> really rich at Disneyland. So take a look at your two airports, do your options. Super Shuttle is my number one pick for getting to the airport, to your hotel hotels. I'm going to put something up on the screen here and this is what I sent to my friend too when she was looking at hotels. If you book a hotel pretty much in this bubble it's going to be walking distance. That is one thing that I love about Disneyland is all your hotels that are in that kind of little bubble of Harbor Catella cross section you can walk to the parks. Um, that's also what I love about the parks is that there's literally the Esplanade and there's two parks <laughs> that's it you can walk everywhere. So you don't have to worry about paying for Ubers or taxis or shuttles or things like that. Where at Disney World, if you're staying on property, you have to count for a 20 minute bus ride or a 10 minute Uber, things like that. Not a problem in Disneyland, you can walk everywhere. I've personally stayed at a whole bunch of resorts. Um, depending on your budget, Nights Inn is gonna be the cheapest. It does have a slight resort fee now, which dinged me last time because when I booked Expedia, there was not a resort fee and they changed their policies before I went on my trip. It's still only like $10 a night. That is something to keep in mind when you're doing your bookings, look for resort fees. They can get you, especially in Orlando. Some of them had $25 US dollars a night resort fee. It was insane. So <laughs> it's one thing to keep in mind across the board booking Disney keep um, track of any resort fees. Night's in, it's a cheap motel, it's nothing fancy. It's one of those like crappy takeaway breakfasts with like muffins and toast and coffee, nothing special. But if you want to save money and be somewhere that is within a 15 minute walk to the park, it is the perfect location. There is a Blaze Pizza across the street. You are right beside Garden Walk if you want to go to like Cheesecake Factory or do a little shopping. It is literally right behind your hotel. It's so close. Um, near the Blaze on the other side of harbor i think you have a cvs there the park is right there it's a really really good location and it's usually a insanely good price um if you want to get a little bit closer to the park and you have a little bit more of a budget i've stayed at grand legacy twice now i really enjoyed it um they used to have a breakfast that was free and i wish they still had that because then it would be a really good deal because it had like a pretty decent breakfast to be honest it is not free anymore, unfortunately. I also wouldn't be surprised if they now had a resort fee as well, because they strike me as the kind of place that would. But it's a little bit of a step up, it's a little bit of a nicer place. It is directly across the street. Pretty much Grand Legacy and the hotel that's beside it, which is in Tropicana, but it's one of the other ones that they all look the same. Um, it is Those are gonna be like the closest resorts to the hotel. If you look at the map that I showed, you can stay on the other side, but some people get mixed signals about entering from downtown Disney. You can't cut through certain resorts anymore. They want you to be staying there. So I like staying on the harbor side, but that's just me. But Grand Legacy is really nice. Nights in really nice. I stayed at the red line and I honestly didn't think it was worth it. If you can get like a wicked deal, maybe, um, but it's a really long walk. I've also stayed at, what is it called? There's a huge chain across the street. I'll Google it and I'll pop it on the screen. There's a big chain hotel right across the street from the red line. It was okay too, but we rented a car and parking was really expensive overnight there. I think there was a resort fee as well. And honestly, anything that gets like that far down harbor is a bit of a walk. I would rather pay less money and stay at a worse hotel, especially when you're not really staying there that long, um, to stay somewhere like Nights in Grand Legacy. I think I stayed, it's changed name, it was the Anaheim I think when I stayed there and that was a pretty decent motel too. It was like dirt cheap when I stayed last April because they were under renovations but now it's more expensive. But anything in the Harbor could tell a little bubble is good. I've heard really good things about West Best Western Stovall, haven't stayed there but I've heard good things. Motel 6 a little bit further away but I've heard good things about them as well. If you have a little bit more money um, and want something locally owned, I know Candy Cane Inn is really really close too. It's right across from Little Strip, Strip Mall. It has a shuttle to the parks so those are a couple options for you. Obviously you can take a look at reviews and see what you're looking at because what I'm looking at is not going to be the same as what a family of four who has 
you know, two kids under the age of six is looking at, but those are just my like favorite for deals. I'm, like out of breath, I'm talking so fast. And then before I wrap this up, I want to keep this like right around 20 minutes before I start editing it, is if you're booking flight and hotel together, I always book through Expedia. I've looked at a billion other places, a billion other options. Expedia is pretty much always the cheapest if you bundle it. Usually they will knock off like the cost of a night's stay or something insane like that if you put them together. If you are an Expedia member, you get points. You can get really, really good discounts on VIP hotels, which are essentially hotels that have deals with Expedia, so they cut them bigger discounts. So I've stayed at those before. Um, I find the reviews are pretty spot on. Sometimes they lean more on the bad side. Usually I'll go to a resort and I'll be pleasantly surprised when I've read the reviews. I've never had like really good reviews on a place in Expedia and then gone and it's been terrible. Um, but I find that's the best bundling deal. Also in that, if you have someone who's flying from somewhere else, so like for me, I'm flying from Kelowna, Jamie's flying from Calgary. What I do is I will book my flight and hotel as a one person hotel um, and I will make sure that it's booked with a bed big enough for two of us. I know this is technically kind of against the rules, but I've literally never gotten in trouble for it. And I've never had like an extra person charge fee because it's just like a motel. Also, we're always together. So like, I'll usually just go check in, but I'll book at least one of them bundled with flight and hotel. If you have two people coming from two locations, it doesn't make sense to individually book hotel and then two flights. Bundle one of them and you'll get a better deal. Oh. Last thing that I can think of about saving money is it's not always going to be a huge amount. Sometimes it's a little amount. And sometimes if you're booking a trip that costs $1,500, even getting 1% cash back can be really good. So this is like not any sort of ad. I'm literally a no one. This is not sponsored, but I'll have the link down below for Rakuten or Rakuten, however you pronounce it. It was formerly Ebates. It is a cash back site. I use it when I'm shopping online anywhere. So Amazon, Sephora, literally anywhere that I shop online. I check to see if it's on Ebates first. In the last like probably two, three years I've been using it, I've gotten like 300 plus dollars cash back. They just like send you a check in the mail every three, four months, something like that. It's, <laughs> it seems fake, but essentially brands will run promos and put cash back on there and then you get the money from eBay, it's kind of. But Expedia is on at least the Canadian version. Like I said, it's not always something huge. It's usually between like one and 3% cash back, depending on if you book just a hotel or like an all-inclusive or like excursions and stuff like that. But even like I said, if you're booking something that's you know, thousands of dollars, 1% cash back can give you like 10 bucks. So what's the harm in just like getting anything back? You know, that I think wraps it up. I'm probably forgetting something. And when I go to edit this, I'm probably gonna be like, Lauren, you're so, you're so dumb, you forgot this. But that is pretty much my like really, really fast condensed version of how to pick dates if you're traveling to Disneyland, resorts that I recommend, saving money when booking hotels, flights, airports, shuttles, things like that. I feel like I put so much information in this video that I don't even know what I said anymore. But next week I'll be talking about ticketing, passes, fast pass, slash now max pass, um, things along that line. So hopefully next week's video won't be as long as this. But that is what is coming up. And then the week after that, I think I'm going to do like must do attractions. I think the week after that, I'm going to do must do snacks. So if you have questions about Disneyland, questions, comments, concerns, any of the above, um, anything that you think is like a must do or tips that you have, let me know. I'll throw it in the video. I'll credit you. I don't know. As always, all my links to everything are down below. You can find me everywhere. Um, I do have like a bunch of random content coming up. So you won't only have Disneyland and you won't only have Disney World and you won't only have me crying in front of my camera because I do that sometimes too. I cannot promise. So hit on my links, please subscribe. There's more stuff coming out. I need to stop talking now. I'm already at 22 minutes. I need to go buy some food because your girl is hungry. I will see you guys in probably like, I don't know, like a couple of days or something like that. Okay, bye. <laughs>